All right, so what are we thinking here? What are the dimensions of A? It's a four by six. Oh no, okay. And the value of the elements, so what's A two three? Zero. Yeah, it's A two three, not 23, because it's row two, column three. No, it used to be that we did, like there was a comma, not anymore. Um, if you go in like double digits, you could put a comma, but we're not gonna. Okay. What about three five? And the other one? Negative what? Okay. So. All right. So what about special matrices? A row matrix, right, is some is a matrix that only has one row. So um, look at this bottom one, for example, just one row. What are the dimensions of that matrix? It's one by four. Okay, column matrix, same situation, you just have one column, and so this is a, a two by one, right? No. Then it's a one by one. It's a, yeah, it, so, okay, so a square matrix, a square matrix is a matrix that has the same number of rows as it does columns. So take a look at this one. It's a what? What are the dimensions? It's a two by two. Now, if I wanted a, so I could do a two by two, a three by three, a, a seven by seven, and I could do a one by one. It's got one row and one column. Okay, that's a one by one. It's a thing. That's also a square, I mean, yeah, technically, yes. Um, sorry, a zero matrix can have any dimension, but all of its elements are zeros, all right? Okay, an identity matrix is a matrix in which, all right? So take a look at this one. This is a diagonal matrix. I'm sorry, not a diagonal, a square matrix. Take a look at this diagonal. All right, we call that the main diagonal. All right, so um, it's important that the main diagonal, it starts from the very first term going left to right, and then it goes diagonally across. Okay. No, that would not be a main diagonal, left to right, okay? An identity matrix is a matrix in which every element on the main diagonal is one, we're going to add to this. And all other elements are zero. Okay. All right. So that's just vocabulary. All right. Talking about matrix operations, we can add and subtract matrices if, only if, um, they have the same dimensions. Four by three, four by three. Three by seven, three by seven, okay? And the way in which you add them is you start with an element in a matrix and then the corresponding, the element in the corresponding position in the other one, right? You add them and then it goes in that same position. So picking another one, look at this. This is the position in row two, column two. The next one in row two, column two is this one. You add them and you put it in row two, column two. We can talk about it all we want. It's a lot simpler if we just do one, okay? Take a look at this first one. It wants us to do A plus C, but you can't, so it's, you just say not possible. <laughs> Don't worry, it's not that big of a deal. Okay. We have a lot of those on the test. <laughs> All right. So B minus A. B minus A is this one, right? And so it's a two by two minus a two by two. The answer is also going to be a two by two. All right. I take the one in row one, column one, minus this one, so 10 minus 2 is 8. All right, next one, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Next one, 
negative 3 minus minus 1 is just 2. And what about the last one? All right, fine. What about the last one? 13. Oh, just wait until we start multiplying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a scalar multiplication, a scalar is a common ordinary number not inside a matrix. Um, scalar multiplication, basically when you multiply a scalar with a matrix, you just multiply every single term in the matrix by that number, okay? So this one, it's, um, so this one, each of these elements in the matrix gets a, multiplied by minus 3. So then we get negative 3, and then across negative 5, and 0, and 6, and 18, and negative 12. Okay? So, so far pretty mindless. Yeah. No, no, they're not, actually. Okay, so, um, as far as, you know, properties, the properties some of the properties that apply to numbers, regular numbers, also apply to matrices. So for example, like if we're dealing with numbers, right, and you have 3 plus 7, you could make a, use the commutative property into 7 plus 3, right? Also, if I have, for example, 3 plus 7 plus 13, I can do 7 plus 13 first and add it to 3, or I could do 3 plus 7 first and add it to 13. So basically, it's the same thing with matrices. You could like add and subtract in any order that you want, okay? All right, so let's take a look at this one. We have to do 3a minus b. So this is going to be 3 times a minus b. And just to show you how to do the... Okay, um, so you can put parentheses around matrices like this, okay? And we're going to do the addition or the subtraction first. So it's going to be 4, negative 2, and what? 1, negative 3, 4, negative 4. So that's 12, negative 6, 3, negative 9, and 12, and negative 12. All right? Now, another thing we could do with matrices is solve equations using matrices. Just like we could solve a regular old linear equation in, you know, with regular numbers. 3x plus 7 equals blah, right? If I do have one like this, 3x plus 7 is equal to 12, right? We know what to do. We subtract 7, we divide by 3, and then we solve for x, and x is a number, right? Well, in the world of matrices, I could also do 3x plus 7 like this, where x is a capital X, and it stands for a matrix, all right? That means when I solve it, right, I'm going to get, so when I solve it, I'm going to get a matrix. But now all the other players are a matrix as well, okay? So, for example, 2x plus b is equal to c, okay? And you just do it using matrices, all right? So, um, let's take a look at one. You're going to algebraically solve for x, and then substitute the given matrices, and blah, blah, blah. Honestly, much simpler than it sounds. So, here's, I'm given a, I'm given b. Here is what I need to solve. Okay, forget about matrices. Let's just do some algebra. 2x minus a is equal to b. And I need to solve it for x. I can totally do that, right? Because 2x is a plus b, right? And then what's x? Right, or half a plus b. Remember, we're dealing with matrices, and it's just cleaner to write it this way. Yeah. Like 
Doesn't matter. You could do negative a plus b or a minus b. If you do negative a, then you would just have to multiply all of the entries in a by a negative. Okay, so now x is equal to half a plus b. Right, and then do we need to go through the addition of this one? So you basically, like you just add the matrices and then you're gonna divide each term by two, okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's just do it. So half of four and two and negative two, eight and negative four and 10, and you multiply each by a half, so 2, 1, minus 1, 4, minus 2, 5. That's it. Oh, yes. Fractions, decimals, they're all good. I mean, we're not going to deal with imaginary numbers on, in here. Fractions, decimals, all work, okay? All right, now for the good stuff, okay? Linear systems and row operations. We have learned, well, you have learned, ever since you were in Algebra 1, how to solve systems of equations, right? And we start off slow with things like x plus 2y is equal to 7, 3x minus y is equal to 14, and we teach you different ways of solving those, right? And so what do those two represents, represent? The top one is a line, the bottom one is a line, and the solution is where they cross. Now, after that in Algebra 2, we go to three equations and three variables, remember? Where you had x, y, z, x, y, z, x, y, z. In that case, what did each equation represent? With an x, y, z, they're each planes, and they're, the, their solution is the point where all three planes would intersect. Okay, so if you look at this room, right, the plane of the board, the ceiling, and that green wall over there, they all, all three intersect in that corner up there. So that's the point in space where they intersect, okay? Um, and if, so the solution there would be a three-point coordinate, like negative two, one, four, okay? That's what we're going to do here. We're going to start, though, um, with a matrix twist, all right? So, first off, one thing we could do, all right, is um, we're still gonna use substitution and elimination methods. We're gonna convert the linear system into um, a system in triangular form. Another word for a triangular form is row echelon form. I'm not going to use triangular form. I use row echelon form. What does that mean? When you put a matrix, when you put a system of equations into row echelon form, basically it looks like this. And you can see where the triangle comes from. So the first equation has x, y, z. In the second one, we got rid of x. In the third one, we got rid of x and y. And if you look, you know, it looks like a triangle. The process by which we do this is Gaussian elimination, okay? Gauss was a scientist, mathematician. He did a lot of work with magnetism. He's got a unit named after him, right? Gauss and Tesla, they both have units named after mag mag uh, magnetism. Okay. So, there are some things that we're going to be able to do, and it doesn't cost us anything, and those are interchange any two rows, multiply any equation by any number, so you can multiply an equation by a number, and then add a multiple of one equation to another. So for example, I could take equation one, multiply it by three, and add it to another one. All right, so here is how we're gonna do it into triangular form. Okay, first, we're gonna eliminate the x term in equation three. Then, we're going to eliminate the x term in equation 2. 
then we're going to eliminate the y term in equation 3. All right? Always go in this order. It's like my friendly, sisterly advice to you, okay? And then when you're done, make sure the leading coefficients of each equation are 1, okay? When you, like this way, there is like, it's just simpler. Then you're, then you could swap. So you can interchange two rows so that you could put it in that form. Huh? Yeah, like you can write equation one on the bottom and move one of them up. Okay, so here's what we do. Rather than using the word equation, I'm going to use rows. So this is going to be row one, row two, row three. Tips and tricks. Keep a record of what you're doing at each step. Okay? One thing I want to do is scan my equations and see if there is an equation that I could, you know, divide by a common number where it looks like I could do that for row one. Right? I could just divide out of five. Okay? Do you have to? Not really. In the end, you're going to have to. Why not deal with smaller numbers from the beginning, though? So let's do that. Here is what I do. Keep a record of everything you do. So I do 1 fifth row 1. That's going to be x minus y minus z is equal to 35. And then the next ones will be unchanged. Ah, 7. Okay, so those are things that get you into trouble. So we're going to watch out for that stuff. Okay, now, remember what I had told you is in here. First, eliminate x term in equation 3. So the way I do this always is, first, I get rid of this term. Then I get rid of this. Then I get rid of this, always. 1, 2, 3. Why? It's so much simpler when you do it that way. Okay, so we're going to get rid of this the 3x okay now here is what's a little different from what you've seen before that's what I'm gonna get rid of right the first two rows are gonna remain unchanged here I just copy them down okay now look at this 3x I need to somehow get rid of the 3x I need to do that by so take, take a look at that first column. I need to combine the 3x with one of the other values in the column, or a multiple of one of the other ones in the column to get rid of it. So basically, one thing I could do is, what if I multiply the second row by negative, uh, by, by three, and added it to this, would I get a zero here? I would, so that's how I start. You're doing that basically almost like mentally. You're not permanently changing that second row, okay? So here's what we do. Keep a record of everything you're going to do. So I'm going to do 3 row 2, 3 times row 2, minus, uh, I'm sorry, plus row 3, okay? So that's going to be negative 3x plus 3x, that's 0. And then... 6y, right? So 3 times 2y minus 2y, 4y. Okay? And then 3 times negative 3z plus 7z. Huh? Negative 2z equals, now the, ne the, the constant, 3 times negative 12 plus 30, negative 6. All right? Okay, let me just get rid of this junk. Now, you see how it says 0 plus 4y? That's silly. We don't write the 0. Okay, we're almost there. Next, I want to get rid of this negative x. How can I do that? Right. Okay, so whatever I'm not going to change, I just copy it over.
Okay, so the to get rid of the one in the blue, I'm just going to do R1 plus R2. And that'll be 0 plus y uh, minus 4z equals negative 5. Yeah? Yes. So what I had done in the third one was 3 times r2 plus r3. 3 times r2, that's 6y, plus this one, right? Okay, so are we okay with this? Which step? The last one? Okay, so I want to get rid of that x, that negative x. I look in its own column. One thing I could do is if I just add those two, I get a zero for that, right? So I'm just going to add row 1 plus row 2. Row 1 plus row 2. So that gives me a zero. Negative y plus 2y is y. Negative z minus 3z is negative 4z. Yes, you have to have to the whole row. Okay, next, I'm going to get rid of, yes. You only change the one for the, like, you only change the row where what you want to get rid of is. Like, I wanted to get rid of this one, right? Yeah. The other two rows remain unchanged. Yes. Yeah, I know. That's why I first copy them down, and then I just make a change to the one I'm changing. All right, so next, I'm going to get rid of the 4y. What can I do? I look in its own column. Okay, if I use the first row, then I'm going to put an x back in here because I have to do it for the whole. So it's easiest to use the bottom two. And you're going to do it like this every single time. You're going to use those bottom two rows. So what am I going to do? Multiply this by 4 and subtract. Okay, so I'm going to do 4 row 2 minus row 3. All right, whatever's not changing, I just copy it down. Now I'm changing this, and later I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to do two things in one step. So 4y minus 4y, 0. Negative 16z plus 2z. Negative 14z equals negative 20 plus 6, negative 14. Oh my. Because it's minus minus 6. Yeah. Okay, so let's do this. 4 times this, 4y. Minus 4y, 0. 4 times this, negative 16. Minus, minus, okay? If you're having trouble doing it in your mind, just write it down. So 4 times negative 4z minus negative 2z, okay? Write it down as it says here. Now the last step is to make sure they all have um, leading coefficients of 1. So I'm good with the first row. I'm good with the second row. And I'm good, okay, the last one I need to divide by negative 14, so I get z is equal to 1. This is my matrix in row echelon form. No, all leading coefficients have to be 1. Okay, so I did that. Then, now I'm going to solve. Okay, we're not done yet. We solve by what we call back substitution, okay? I know from here that z is equal to 1. So I take row 2. y minus 4z is equal to negative 5. Can I substitute 1 for z? Sure I can. y equals what? Are you sure? Negative 1. Then I take row 1, right, 
So it's going to be x minus minus 1 minus another 1 equals 7. So how much is x? x is 7. Remember, the solution represents the, where all three of these planes meet. So that's at the point 7, minus 1, and 1. Isn't that fun? The last one is. Yeah. So um, the thing is, it's important to be very, very careful so that you don't make a careless error somewhere. Um, and what helps is if you do keep a record, like 3R2 plus R3 and so on, so that you could, you know, trace your steps. Okay, yeah. Which addition? If you noticed, when we were doing this, okay, we were manipulating, like we were changing the coefficients of the variables, and then we were just copying over the variables for each step. And that's just, like, it's, it's too much writing. We could, we don't even need the variables. We could just deal with the coefficients. So that's when matrices come in. We could get rid of the, uh, the variables altogether and just use what we call an augmented matrix, okay? So what an augmented matrix is, is it lists the coefficients and the constant terms only. So take a look at the system of equations. The next one over is what we call the augmented matrix. And it's just got the coefficients, it's just the numbers. 5 minus 5 minus 5, 35, okay? Um, we augmented, we cut it off where the constants were, okay? So these constants will get their own column here. And then if you want only the coefficients in a matrix, that's that one, that's the coefficients matrix, okay? Now, we could talk about the same things in matrix form. So take a look at row echelon form for a matrix. All right. Um, basically, you could do a triangle like this, row echelon form. The main diagonal is all ones. Everything underneath is zeros. And if there is a row of all zeros, you have to just put it at the bottom. Yes. Yeah, those are basically everything you could do. Okay. You know, you, you can multiply a whole row by a number or divide by a number. You could combine multiples. So let's take a look at this uh, A. Is that in row echelon form? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right, because this is the main diagonal and everything underneath is zeros. What about the second one? No. no. What about the third one? Yes, main diagonal, everything underneath is zeros. And if there is a row of all zeros, it has to be placed underneath. So, yes. Hmm? No. An identity matrix. It, like, we don't, this is an augmented matrix. An identity matrix would just be like a square matrix and nothing else. Yeah. In an actual equation, it would be when 0 equals 0. We're going to do one like that. Okay, this is more of what I said before, right? Start with the bottom left, go to the one right above, and then um, A32. We're going to solve the exact same one from above using augmented matrices now. Okay? All right. So, and let me copy it down here into matrix form. So that's going to be 5, negative 5, negative 5, 35, negative 1, 2, negative 3, negative 12, 3, negative 2, 7, 30. Yeah, you can. You can take them out. In fact, that's what I want to do now. I want to take out the fives. So 1 minus 1 minus 1 minus 7. Positive 7. Negative 1, 2, negative 3, negative 12. 3, negative 2, 7, 30. Okay. Now, 
Here's what I want to do. That, okay, I want to get rid of this three first. Okay, so what can I do? Right, look in its own column. I can multiply row two by three and add it to this one. So I could do three R2 plus R3. And I'm going to show you how to do two steps in one here. So for the first one, I get 0. Then I get 6 minus 2, 4. Negative 9 plus 7, negative 2. Negative 36 plus 30, negative 6. In the same step, now I'm going to get rid of the negative 1. So I go back to the, you know, to this step. How can I get rid of the minus one? Add row one and row two. So I add row one plus row two. I get zero, one, minus four, minus five. The last one I'm gonna keep unchanged. Okay. Now what am I gonna get rid of? The 4. How can I get rid of the 4? Use the row immediately above it. Okay? So, 4 times row 2 minus row 3. Okay, that's not going to change. This one's not going to change either. Negative 5. Okay, and then the last row... It's going to be 4 minus 4, 0. Negative 16 plus 2, negative 14. Negative 20 plus 6, negative 14. Now, the terms on the, on the main diagonal have to be 1s. So... What can I divide by? 14, so 1 over 14 times row 3. And that gives me negative 14. Okay. Okay, now, this is my matrix in row echelon form. Okay. Now, why is this such a cool thing? Well, I'll tell you. This first column represents x, then y, then z. So the way you read each of these rows, okay, is the first row here, that's 1x minus 1y minus 1z, okay? So look at row 3. What information do you get from row 3? Right, row 3 tells you z is equal to 1. Row 2 tells you y minus 4z is equal to negative 5, right? So that's how you would go on solving it. I don't think we need to go through that one again. Wait, yes. Yeah, yeah. Maya? Yeah, because I needed to divide by negative 14, right? Okay. When we do it this way, right, Gaussian elimination, we then have to go and do the substitution and then, you know, to find um, x, the values of x, y, and z. What you could also do is, since you're on a roll here, okay, um, he, okay, so you can make the main diagonal into ones, but you could keep going so that the ones on top also become zeros, like the ones on the bottom. When you do that, you've already saved it, and it's just so much simpler to do everything else. That's Gauss-Jordan elimination. So basically what you're going to do, you can also put it in reduced row echelon form, meaning this main diagonal is ones, but you make everything zeros, not just the ones underneath. 
So you already have your x, y, z values, right? So you could just say, okay, x equals a, y equals b, z uh, equals c, okay? So let's do that. That's called reduced row echelon form. So let's do that here. I'm going to uh, write this into the matrix. It was the same one. I just left it that way. It was the same exact one. I didn't feel like you didn't, you, you know, you needed to do more of the algebra. Yeah. Okay. So, same thing. I always start with the bottom left. Okay. How can I get rid of that one? Right. So, two row two plus row three. Right? So, that's zero. 4 minus 3 is 1, negative 2 plus 3 is 1, 4 plus 8 is 12. It really does not help if you're doing anything else while you're doing this, right? So, like, you really have to concentrate. Okay, so next I want to get rid of this minus 1. What can I do there? You sure can. Row 1 plus row 2, you get a 0 a 1, a 0, and a 5, okay? And here, let's see what we have, all right? Yeah, okay. So next, let me get rid of the 1 here on the bottom. Subtract it. Right. So what I want to do is, okay, so now look, here you could do one or two things. You could either do row 2 minus row 1, then here you're going to get a negative. Or you could do row, row 3 minus row 2, then you get positive. See what I mean? Like if you, if you subtract top minus bottom, you're going to make this a negative. But if you do bottom minus top, you're going to get all positive. It's just choice. I'm going to choose that way, row 3 minus row 2, right? So I'm going to get 0, 0, 1, 7. And let's see what else we have here. Let's see where we're at, where we stand. Huh? Am I good? Okay. So I still need to get rid of two things. All right, I need to get rid of the negative 1 on top. How can I get rid of the negative 1 on top? Add. Add the second one. So I'm going to do row 1 plus row 2. And I'm going to get 1, 0, 1, 8. And then I get all the other ones will stay. Now what? Subtract row 1 minus row 3. I'm going to get 1, 0, 0, 1. And then the rest are 0, 1, 0, 5. Okay, and now look, you could just take, you could, all you have to do is look, and you have your x, y, and z, right? So, yeah, x equals 1, y equals 5, z equals 7. Isn't it though? Huh? <laughs> okay. Now, of course, there have to be exceptions to any rule because it's too boring otherwise. So let's do those other two special cases. All right. Okay. When you are not able to write a matrix in row echelon form, 
then it's either uh, going to have no solution or it's going to have infinitely many solutions, right? And if you think about three planes, if you think about three parallel planes, then there is no solution. If you think about, you know, two parallel planes and one cutting them, there is still no solution because not all three are intersecting at the same spot. Do you see what I mean? Um, now, if you think about three planes intersecting um, on a line, so for example, like if, if, you, if you look at like pages in a book, right? If a book has 150 pages, they're all bound, right? You, if you like open it like this, you could imagine that all of those planes are intersecting at that one line, correct? So that has infinitely many solutions because on that one line where they're all intersecting, you have an infinite number of points. Um, part A. Take a look at part A. Okay. Um, so the matrix for this is going to look like this. 2, 3, minus 1, 13. 1, 1, minus 2, and 5. Okay. I'm going to get rid of the 1. You know what I'm going to do is row 1 minus row 3. So that'll be a 0, a 1, a 3, and a 3. In the same step, I'm going to get rid of the 2 immediately above it. So you know what I'm going to do there? 2 row 1 minus row 2. Because I can do that. So 2 minus 2 will give me 0. I'm subtracting them, them. Row 1 minus row 3. Row 1 minus row 3. So then, last uh, the third one here, 2 row 1 minus row 2. So it's 2 plus 1 is 3. And then 16 minus 13 is 3. Oh, my. Okay. What do we have there? The same number, right? So what you can do here is this. So you know that you're going to have the same solution. Um, so next, if I wanted to get rid of, so let's just go one more step just for fun. If I wanted to get rid of this one now, I would have to do row 2 minus row 3, right? So um, it's going to be 0, 0, 0, 0, correct? Okay. So um, let me copy this down. 0, 1, 3, 3. Okay, so what does that bottom row tell you? It tells you 0 equals 0, and that's true always. So this one has infinitely many solutions. Is it all real? Not all real, but infinitely many. All real would be every single point in every single plane in space. No, these all meet like on a line. So now here's how we do it. Take row 2. What do I have from row 2? It's y plus 3z is equal to 3. All right? So basically what you want to do is you want to solve both of those equations that are remaining um, in terms of z. So you want to solve them for y and for x. Okay? So here's how we do this. y is equal to 3 minus 3z. Is that right? Okay. Now I take row 1. Row 1 tells me x plus 2y plus z is equal to 8. But we know, z, well, we know y and z, right? z is z, and y is 3 minus 3z plus z is equal to 8. So x plus 6 minus 6z plus z is equal to 8. Um, what is this one here? X minus 
5z is equal to 2, x is equal to 5z plus 2. Correct? So now, my point is x, y, yeah, and z. Okay? That means you could generate all the points in space which are solutions to this. So if you just pick a value for z, then you can get a corresponding one for y and x and from that. Okay? Let's see what this is going to turn out to be. So 2, 3, minus 1, 1, 1, 1, minus 2, 5, 1, 2, 1, 8. Okay, what do we think? Let's get rid of this bottom one. I'm going to do row 2 minus row 3, if you don't mind. 0 minus 1 minus 3 minus 3. And then for the one above it, let's do row 1 minus 2 times row 2. Row 1 uh, minus 2 times row 2, how much is that? Is it 3? And 1 minus 10, negative 9. Okay, next. I want to get rid of this bottom one. And I'm going to add row 2 plus row 3 because I can. So let me just copy the ones from the top so we can appreciate this in its fullest. Okay, so I add them. Look at what I get. 0, 0, 0, negative 12. What does this tell me? 0 equals negative 12. But when does 0 equal negative 12? Never. So that's no solution. Then you don't have to do anything else. 